In 1857, three years after O'Fallon's founding in 1854, William Peach and Levi Simmons built what was recorded as the town's fifth building. Made of brick, it measured 30 by 40 feet and was two stories high. On the night of June 3, 1863, a fire destroyed it. Simmons replaced it with another two-story brick building. Standing in O'Fallon at the northwest corner of State Street and Lincoln Avenue, that replacement still stands today and is the focus of our story. Better known today as Gia's Pizza, 102 West State Street has been a fixture in downtown O'Fallon since the middle of the Civil War. Originally, it housed the dry goods and grocery store of William Peach and Levi Simmons. In the mid-1870s, though, English immigrant John Shinton had taken over, converting the first floor to a saloon and using the second floor as a hall, which ended up being what was said to be O'Fallon's first theater, Shinton's Hall. Here's how early O'Fallon historian John T. Linnish described it in 1935. Some time along in the Roaring Seventies, John Shinton, better known as Jack, located there and kept a saloon. He was an ex-prize fighter and had been a miner, I think, and became a well-known citizen. At the time, the entrance to the hall was through the dining room and up a narrow stairway. The hall was used for dances and dancing schools, public meetings, and as a lodge room, and various other purposes. It was very inconvenient to get at, besides being dangerous in case of fire. Shinton made improvements on the building, enlarged the hall, and put in a stage of about 10 by 12 feet. He also built a ticket office and a stairway at the southeast corner with an entrance to the hall from the porch above. And the town had a theater. Jack Shinton was the dean of O'Fallon drama, but I never heard him call that. Traveling companies began to take notice of the town and get performances once in a while. John Shinton died in 1884. Apparently, a saloon continued to be operated out of the first floor, but the second floor became the commercial hotel. From 1910 to 1918, Edward R. Roseberry operated the hotel and saloon and briefly provided downtown an interesting mascot. In early 1915, he acquired a Russian tame dancing bear, a gift he claimed from the Russian government. Whatever its source, it was a springtime darling of the O'Fallon Progress social columns, with the newspaper following his weekly exploits. The bear even took to drinking beer, not surprising since his owner ran a saloon, and had its own fan club called the Bear Group. By April 30th, it vanished from the social scene, but his legacy lived on in photos and tall tales. Roseberry's death and prohibition ended the saloon and hotel business. In its place, the Sussman brothers opened a grocery store in the building in 1920. They already had two stores in East St. Louis and one in Dupo. Ella Sussman managed the O'Fallon location, which included a meat and bakery department with goods coming from their East St. Louis stores. They were known for discount prices and started a price war in O'Fallon, causing local prices to drop to meet Sussman's. The store didn't last long and was closed by August of 1921. J.C. McClanahan then bought the building, added the rear addition to use as a garage, and opened a Ford dealership, service station, and garage there. That lasted until 1928, when it became a grocery store again, a stop-and-shop market operated by the Allen family, who later founded Allen Foods. In addition to a department store in O'Fallon on West 1st, they also had stop and shops in Breeze, Trenton, Belleville, and East St. Louis. The stop and shop in O'Fallon had been previously located at 115 East 1st. Ten years after it moved in, it moved out in 1938 to West 1st Street. Beginning in 1939, independent engineering leased the building for a time, but in 1943, it was bought by Lloyd K.D. Cavins to use as a station for his bus company, O'Fallon Belvo Coach Company. The first floor housed a cafe, known as the Waiting Room Cafe, and a ticket and business office. The back was used for buses. In 1945, the present glass block and stone facade at the front entrance was added. It was as a bus station and restaurant that many O'Fallonites remember the building back in the day. That's also the period when the building's most famous visitors were documented eating lunch. 
in March 1951, O'Fallon native and actor William Holden ate there with his wife, actress Brenda Marshall, and Ernest Smiley, president of the First National Bank, located across the street. Holden and Marshall were in town for a visit. In 1963, the O'Fallon Belleville Coach Company was bought out by Bi-State Development Agency that ran buses in the Metro East. For a while, the building housed the Tiki Restaurant and later the O'Fallon Thrift Shop. 1978, however, brought the threat of demolition. The building was in a state of disrepair under Bi-State ownership, and the city of O'Fallon filed suit to condemn it. The building was put up for sale and a new owner took over. A succession of businesses followed. Town & Country Supply, Fashion Corner Outlet, Sorrento's Pizza, Dance Station, e j Printing, and CJ Photography. It was during that time period in 1989 that the building was once again threatened with demolition when the owner, Site Oil Company of Missouri, wanted to tear it down to make way for a convenience store and gas station. While the O'Fallon Planning Commission was supportive of the idea, there was vocal local dissent. The building survived the threat, however, and in 1996, the current owner, Ned Drolet, acquired the property and has since done much to protect and preserve it, being sensitive to its historic character. In 1998, State Street Coffee's open shop on the first floor, then came Hersey Telecom. Then State Street Cafe and Maui Onion Grill after that. In 2007, FKG Oil, which operates the Motomart gas station convenience stores, opened a Papa Vito's pizza franchise in the building under the management of Scott Kaiser. It was during this time that the West Patio enclosure was added. In 2011, they decided to go their own way, renaming the restaurant Gia's Pizza. A popular eating and meeting destination, Gia's has occupied that corner ever since, while the back is currently home to CrossFit Voyage. Located in the heart of the downtown district, the building is one of the few 19th century brick commercial buildings left in O'Fallon. 102 West State is a true survivor, surviving attempts to tear it down and outlasting two other buildings at the northeast and southeast corners of that intersection that have since disappeared. It's now a vital part of the downtown district renaissance and a tangible reminder of O'Fallon's long and rich history.